Welcome back to Drive Your Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Master Coach Carrie Marshall, and it's time to go after those goals. Yeah, whether ready or not, life's coming hard, no breaks, no stop. And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted. I never drop. If you feel a bit out of control and out the box, here's a way that you could drive your thoughts. Turn this podcast on, it's a lock. Carrie Marshall. Welcome back to Drive Your Thoughts Coaching. I'm Carrie Marshall, and today I'm going to share a personal story with you. So as many of you know, my business is called Drive Your Thoughts Coaching. And sometimes people ask me, like, well, what is that name about? Well, the easy answer is I love fun, fast cars. I really have always had a passion for cars, and so that's an easy answer. I've actually never really shared the real answer of why my business is called Drive Your Thoughts Coaching. And so today I wanted to share that with you. So as much as I do love cars, um, I want to share a story about before I was a coach. Um, So I've always had a lot of male friends. Uh, Even in high school, I had a lot of guy friends. And so one of my friends told me in high school, like, you're just so easy to talk to. And so he'd come to me and talk to me about, you know, girls that he was wanting to date, girls that he'd broken up with, uh, college, you know, all of those big decisions that he was making. And so I really found that I was a safe place for a lot of people to come and talk to for probably a diff- several different reasons. I was non judgmental. I was, have always been really good at listening and asking questions. And so before I was a coach, uh, I was a dental assistant. Uh, and this was before I was even married. So, I've talked about this before, but my family has a dental business and I was a dental assistant for my dad. And we were working in an office uh, in a place called Provo, Utah. And so uh, I was at this office, I was a dental assistant and I was eating lunch and my friend called me. Now we were out of high school and uh, this friend calls me and he says, hey, uh, do you have a second? I just, I just need to tell you something really fast and then you can get back to work. Now. My lunch break was over, but something told me that I really needed to go out and see this friend. And so I said, yeah, I'll be right out just a second. So I go out and he's sitting in his car. And before I even get in the car, there's something wrong. He doesn't look good. He's slumped over and his shoulders are kind of going back and forth like he's crying. And he's kind of slumped over the steering wheel. I'm nervous. I don't know what's going on. This is not like my friend. Uh, I've never actually seen this friend cry before. And so I get in the car and I'm sitting in the passenger seat and I look over at him and he turns to look at me and there's just tears. He has tears on his face. His face is red and blotchy from crying. And I say, what's wrong? And he tells me, I just wanted to tell you, I'm going to go and kill myself. It's just so hard right now. And I didn't know what to do. Here's this friend that I love so much and he's struggling so much. And I knew it was a little bit of a hard time for him, but I didn't know the personal struggle that he was facing. And I think the hardest thing for me in that moment was that there was nothing that really I could do. I could sit there, I could yell and scream and argue with him, but really I couldn't make the decision for him. So it didn't matter that my lunch break was over and it didn't matter that my dad would get mad at me for not coming back. I knew that I just needed to sit with my friend for a minute And so as I sat there trying to decide what to say next, I knew that the only thing that I could do was really be there and love him and ask questions. And whatever came up for him, it didn't matter. My job was to love every single answer that he gave me and love him as a person. And so I started to ask questions. And I started to ask questions like, how bad is it? Be honest. Tell me what's going on for you. When it's your very worst, what are you feeling? Is there any hope at all 
for the for your life. So I sat there for an hour, an hour and a half. I don't even know. And I desperately wanted to ask my friend if I could take him somewhere. But I knew that it wasn't my choices. And if it wasn't my choice to make, it needed to be his choice to make. So after we sat there and talked for so long, I asked him, where do you want to drive to? And we talked about a couple of options. He said, well, first I can go and do what I was going to do. And that's up the canyon. I could end my life up the canyon. And he said, I can go home and act like nothing happened. I can drive around until I, you know, find some other dumb thing to do. I can drive to the hospital and ask for help. And he came up with a couple of other solutions. And then I asked him, where do you want to drive yourself to? And he said, I want to go to the hospital, but I can't do it alone. And so I said, that's okay. I got you. I will drive with you to the hospital. So I sat in the passenger seat and we both cried the awful way there. And he got there and got the help that he needed. And as I was sitting there in the hospital, I was thinking about how it wasn't my responsibility necessarily to take to get in the driver's seat and tell him that he was being silly or that this was dumb. That wasn't my objective at all. That doesn't help anything. My objective was to sit in the passenger seat and let him drive his way to his future. So let's fast forward a little bit. My friend's healthy and happy and has this awesome life that has struggles and challenges. But the one thing that he has is he has the ability to know that he has choices that he can make and that his job is then to decide how to execute them and then to know when to ask for help. So I'm at coach certification and I know I'm going to open a coach, uh, a coach practice for men because I love helping men and I see such a need. There was such a huge gap when I started my coaching business that men weren't getting the mental help that they needed because there was this huge gap of like going to therapy and then doing nothing. <laughs> and I was like, I think I can be that middle piece for a lot of guys there that just want somebody to talk to. So I knew I was going to start this business. So I knew that I couldn't have like a very feminine name with my business because you know guys wouldn't want to come <laughs> so i went to cars and i started to think about cars and i was like how could i really utilize cars because cars are fun i like cars guys like cars and then i remembered my friend and i remember sitting there in the passenger seat and thinking like this is my job like my job is to sit in the passenger seat and ask questions and hold space and love him completely and that's when the name Drive Your Thoughts Coaching came to me. Because it's not about me driving anyone to a destination. It's about you driving yourself through your thoughts, actions, and results to your own destination. My friend couldn't have me make that decision that day because then it would always be my decision and not his. And so that's why I named my business Drive Your Thoughts Coaching. So in order to achieve great things, in order to face the biggest challenges that you will ever face in your life, and in order to be the hero of your own story, you have got to get in the driver's seat of your life. And that includes the driver's seat of your life, your thoughts, your actions, your results, and your feelings. You can't take a back seat. You can't get on a bus. You can't Uber your way to your destination. But a lot of people try. They try to pay someone. They try to put it on other people that it's up to them to do the thing that they need to do. 
But you have to be able to sit in the driver's seat and feel what it feels like to take the wheel in your own hands. You have to feel what it feels like to know what it feels like to accelerate your life and to slam on the brakes in your life. Right now, I have a daughter that's driving, learning how to drive. She's 15. And the very like most interesting thing was when she we switched places and she was driving and I was in the passenger seat. And the first time she drove, I remember thinking that it wasn't going to be a big deal. Like we talked about it a lot, but we got out there and it was probably the scariest thing I have ever done in my life. It was terrifying to have my daughter behind the wheel because I wanted so desperately to accelerate and to brake, and she was figuring it out. So the accelerating and the braking was so choppy. And then there's other people around her, right? There's other cars, and I'm like, we are probably going to die. <laughs> but then we got home, and I just thought, wow, how often am I doing this? with her, maybe even in her own life, where I actually really need to teach her how to get in the driver's seat of her own life. I can't, I cannot drive her to where she wants to be. I cannot get in the driver's seat of her life. That's her job. Just like it's all of yours. So I named my business Drive Your Thoughts Coaching because of a friend and an experience that we had together. But I keep the name Drive Your Thoughts Coaching because it's important that you get in the driver's seat of your life. And it's important that you know that you are in charge of your destination. You're in charge of how you get there. You're in charge of understanding when you need to maybe take a detour. That can't be up to anybody else but you. So I want to invite you to get in the driver's seat of your life. What would that look like if you were always in control? What would it look like if you were able to really navigate and take your life the direction that you want to take it? And we're going to have backseat drivers sometimes. Comes with the territory of driving. We're going to have people that have a lot of expectations and a lot of opinions about where we're supposed to be going. And that's why I want to encourage you to get yourself somebody sitting in the shotgun seat, that passenger seat, that's going to help you and be your best ride or die. I love the term ride or die. It's one of my favorites because it really means someone that's going to have your back and ask you the right questions, but not have an agenda for what you're supposed to be and who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing with your life. Get yourself someone in that dr- in that passenger seat that is going to help you. That when you tell them, here's where I want to get, they're going to be like, I got you. I'm going to pull up the map. I'm going to show you where we're going to take detours. I'm going to say show you where we're going to have pit stops. Right? I'm going to show you when things are really rocky. I'm going to be here for you. I remember driving with my husband one time, and it was like a whiteout. It was so snowy. If you... If you live in Utah, (laughs) you know that our weather changes really fast around here. So we were on this road trip and it's a wide out. He is, can't see anything. It looks like that, uh, that scene from Star Wars where all the stars are coming at you. That's what it looked like with snow because it was pitch dark. And I remember that I had to really tell myself, like, I can't do anything. My job isn't to like freak out, like, you know, do the gasping thing every five minutes. I had to really constrain from that, but I just told myself, like, my job is just to like calmly say every so often, like, you got this. You're doing such a great job, babe. So proud of you. (laughs) It sounds like a funny thing to say, but it really did help. And that's why we want to get the right people in our passenger seat. So I want you to think about your life right now. And if you're in the driver's seat, who do you want in the passenger seat? Now, this might be like a loved one, a spouse, a partner, best friend, but it also might be somebody like a coach. Like that's why, like I said, my business is called Drive Your Thoughts Coaching because I want my clients in the passenger seat and I want to be in the, or the driver's seat and I want to be in the passenger seat helping them along because there are things that I can help see and direct by questions 
by forecasting, all of these different things, by checkpoints like we talk about. That's why coaching is so important. Because when you can get the right person in the passenger seat, that is when you can exponentially take off to your destination. Now, we all go through hard times and we all sometimes don't want to drive. We get tired. We get exhausted from being the person in the driver's seat. But I promise you, any time that I've ever tried to like step back from the driver's seat of my own life, I always regret it. I always go a different way. Uh, it's done the wrong way. <laughs> I never like when I let other people make my choices for me. And so today, I want you to get in the driver's seat of your life. Now, I'd love for you to come over to Instagram at Drive Your Thoughts Coaching, and I'd love for you to message me and tell me, how are you going to get in the driver's seat of your life? Now, let's talk a little bit about that. The first thing is, I want you to think about where you want to go. Now, this can be in conjunction, like with family goals or um, a marriage goal or a business goal. Maybe you're you know, doing a business goal with a business partner. That's fine. But I want you to think about your ultimate destination, because those are all just kind of pit stops along the way. Your business goal might help grow your business, but then where do you want to go? Most of the time when I see businesses, and I help a lot of people like um, sell their business or merge their businesses. And often what I see is that business partners don't stay on the exact same path afterwards. They stay aligned with their goal throughout business things. But then once like um, a sale happens, right, of the business, then they start to kind of lead their own life because they had different destinations. They just had really similar pit stops up to a certain point. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about your own destination and where you want to go. And then I want you to think about how you're getting there. Take ownership for that. Nobody else can tell you the route to take. Nobody else can tell you, you know, how many, how often to stop, but you really do need to be in the driver's seat of your life. And if you're not, I want you to ask yourself, why, why are you letting somebody else dictate how you're going and what you're doing? One thing I see is that occasionally partnerships like spouses will say, well, my partner really wants this or my spouse really wants this. Well, if it's not in alignment with you, then why are you on that destination? Maybe you're supposed to be going on a different destination. That doesn't mean divorce, by the way. It just means that sometimes your destination and theirs is going to be different for a little bit. That means that maybe you're going to have to decide for yourself. I know that entrepreneurship and building my own business has really had to be all about my destination. As much as I really want my husband to love and think about and talk to me about my business, he really doesn't want to. <laughs> he loves my business and he's there to you know bounce ideas off of and sometimes he'll talk to me about it but it's not his destination my business is my destination so be okay with your destination being different sometimes that doesn't mean that you're not going to get somewhere together that just means that with certain things in your life you're going to head a different direction i've loved having my business um, i've loved having a business that's helped create connections with people and a place that I could really help people. Anytime I start with a new client, I envision sitting in the passenger seat with them, driving to the destination that they want to go to. And that's always helped really be a guiding light and a force for my business that I think has really helped create connection. Uh, it's created a very great sense of purpose. And it's also helped both my client and I stay in the exact roles that we need to be in as they go after these goals. Get back in the driver's seat of your life. You're gonna be amazed at what you can accomplish and where you're gonna head. I'll talk to you later, bye. Thanks for listening to this podcast episode. If you're ready to get in the driver's seat of your own life, you can come and follow me at Drive Your Thoughts Coaching on Instagram or come and see more ways to work with me at driveyourthoughts.com. Yeah, whether ready or not, Life's coming hard, no breaks, no stop And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted I never drop If you feel a bit out of control and out the box 
Here's the way that you can drive your thoughts. Turn this podcast on, it's a lock. Carrie Marshall on the clock. 